quiz two. If you want a pretty good idea of what your test is going to be, combine quiz one and quiz two. All right? I think you'll find very few surprises. Number one. Oh, let's do the old because Doug's here and he likes to laugh. Okay. There you go. Number one. When you toss a fair die three times, what's the probability that you will get a five on the first toss, a six on the second toss, and any number except two on the third toss? How many times are we tossing this dice, Amrit? Three. I think I can, for a dice, I think I can still use a tree for three events because I think this is really saying comma and, comma and. And what does and mean? Multiply. What are the odds of getting a five on the first toss? One out of six. And what are the odds of getting a six on the second toss? One out of six. And any number except a two. What are the odds of not two? Five out of six. Uh, five out of 216. One mark. <laughs> By the way, this would be fair game on the provincial as a non-calc question. I think they'd be comfortable expecting you to go 1 times 1 times 5 and 6 times 6 times 6. Did I ask you to memorize some exponents at the very beginning of the year, way back when, when I still liked you? I mean, I mean, when... Uh, anyways, yeah, right? Okay. That came out wrong. Number two. How many cards? Two. Tree. Or maybe I can just visualize it. Let's see. First card is a heart, second card is a heart. Are those both the same event, Madison, heart and heart? I think I can visualize this without doing a tree. The probability of heart one followed by heart two, I think it's going to be 13 out of 52 and 12 out of 51. If they had said a heart followed by not a heart, or if they had said, instead of giving me the specific order, if they had said one heart and one non-heart, I'd probably have to draw the tree to look at all the different possibilities. But here, since they gave me an order, and by the way, that's technically a permutation, but you may have noticed when I did the combinations with you guys as a lesson, it was a video lesson, I really don't use permutations. I do a tree. I use combinations for card questions. But if it's a, they're giving me the specific order, even if it's five cards in a row, I can follow that branch all five in a row, I think. Um, 13 times 12 is, uh, well, 12 times 12 is 144. So 100, 156 over 2652. What's that in lowest terms? Okay, if you if you reduced it, fine. Uh, multiple choice, this would it would be reduced as your answer. So, Amrit, make sure you know how to reduce this. And I'm pragmatic. Use your calculator. Okay, suppose you throw a pair a fair six sided dice. One is white and the other is black. Let T be the total showing of both dice, and let B be the number showing on the black die. Find the probability that the total is eight. Given that, conditional, black is 2. How many dice? I need to use a chart. I didn't leave you much room to do a chart. Sorry. The trees, the trees. I'm going to try and do a chart. Where am I going to do my chart? So I'm going to write down here, use chart. And I'm going to wimp out and just open up a brand new page here. So I'm going to have black dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What was the other colored dice? White, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And although this sounds like a lot of work, when you get good, this takes less than 60 seconds, well less than 60 seconds. One, 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 two. In fact, you know what? Maybe I can just kind of visualize what's... Well, no, this is a quiz. You know, Jasmine, in my homework, I might try and just see if I could visualize which ones I'd be circling just from this pattern already. But on a test or a quiz, I'll write it out. One, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six, three, one, three. I'm not going to 
call these out because I'm having a hard time speaking and doing this at the same time. Four. So on your test, five, five, nice try. What's that, Miguel's height? Oh, sorry. Um, no, five, four, okay. Uh, five, one. Five, two, five, three. On your test, I'm going to give you, Jordan, a two dice question, but I'm probably going to make it that four-sided tetrahedral dice that we did on the quiz because it's a much smaller chart to do. But I'm game. I'm keep going. I'm almost done. Six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, <sighs> six. Okay, there's my chart. This is going to be the probability of that given that is both T equals eight and black equals two divided by black equals two. Now, how many of these is the black dice a 2 and the total is 8? I think only 1 out of 36, is it not? 1 out of 36 divided by how many of these is the black equal starting with a 2? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 36. Oh, wrong one. And the answer is 1 out of 6. Now that I see that, I say, oh yeah, uh, 1 circled out of 6. But I got there with the formula just in case. Is that okay? Nope, not for two dice. I don't think. I haven't. Uh, you, well, yeah. You could do a tree, but you know how many branches your tree would have? 36 branches. You really want to do that? You can. So, rule of thumb, Brett. Dice, two of them, chart. Okay, number four. Dan, how many people are we selecting in number four? Five. Tree? No. Are we selecting without replacement? Bucket, because it's dependent. I'm going to go boys, girls, four boys, five girls. It says we want three girls. How many boys do we have to choose then if we're picking five people? Two. My equation's going to look like this. Four boys, choose two, and five girls, choose three. Now that's the number of ways to pick three girls to make it a probability divide by the number of ways to pick five people. Oh yeah, nine, choose five. I got my built-in error check there. Plus, first plus first equals first. Last plus last equals last. Okay. Now I have to go to my calculator. I think. Here we go. Four math back. Choose two and five math back. Choose three divided by nine math back arrow. Choose five. Double check if I typed it in right. Four choose two, five choose three, nine choose five. And lo and behold, I get an answer of 0. 0.4762. How many decimal places? If they don't say, I usually go to four. So 0 0.4762. By the way, if you wrote 0 0.4761, in grade 12, we'll take a half mark off if you don't know how to round math 8. So don't be sloppy. Kelvin's still awake? I got you before, right? Okay. Number five, two dart players. How many dart players? Two. I'm already thinking maybe three. They throw independently one dart at a target. The probability of each player hitting a bullseye 
is 0.3 and 0.4 respectively. What does respectively mean in that order? What's the probability that at least one of them, you know what? Player one hits or misses. Player two hits or misses. Hits or misses. What are the odds that player one hits a bullseye? 0.3. What are the odds that he misses a bullseye? 0.7. What are the odds that player 2 hits a bullseye? 0.4, 0.6, 0.4, 0 0.6. By the way, how can you tell these are independent? Because these two branches are the same. Amrit, what's this question want me to find? The probability that what? Now, at least one is, it seems to me, this branch is at least one. This branch is at least one. This branch, because 2, is at least one. You know what an easier... Now, you could go... What does or mean, by the way? So you could go plus, plus, plus. I'm going to be clever, and I'm going to go one minus the probability of none because it's less typing. You could use complement here. I'm going to go one minus 0.7 times 0.6. Also, because I can do this completely in my head. I know that 7 times 6 is 42, so 0 0.7 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.42. And I can go 1 minus 0 0.42 in my head and get, is the answer 0 0.58? Yes? Pretty cool, huh? Or, Jordan, you could have gone plus, plus, and plus, multiply down, add across. But it's very handy, very useful. Keep in the back of your mind the idea of the complement. Great shortcut. I like number six. So bag A contains one red and two white marbles. Bag B contains one right, white and two red. A marble is chosen randomly from bag A and placed in bag B. A marble is then randomly chosen from bag B. Determine the probability that the marble selected from bag B is white. Huh? How many marbles are we picking? Two, three. So here's what we have. It seems to me that starting in bag A, we could have been red or white. And you know what? I'll go red from A, white from A. How many red marbles are there in bag A? One out of? How many white marbles out of? Okay. Then we can have red from bag B, white from bag B, red from bag B, white from bag B. Now down this branch, we picked a red marble. And what did we do with that red marble? We put it in bag B. So how many marbles are there in bag B grand total now? Not three, but, and how many are red down this branch? Three out of four, one out of four. Continue. You see where we're going, Dan? We can actually, I, when I first saw this question, I thought, holy smokes, changing marbles back and forth. No, if it's two marbles, I can cut, come up with every possibility. Because Jordan, down here, I picked a white marble. What did I do with that white marble? Put it into bag B. So how many marbles are there in bag B? Four. How many of them are white down this branch? Come on, Ben. Two out of four, two out of four. This is a very neat dependent tree because I'm actually changing the condition of the second bag each time. Does that make sense? There's my tree. Now I'm going to answer the question. They want the probability that we have that. It seems to me that it's this branch or that branch. Is it not? It seems to me that it's going to be one third times one quarter or two thirds times two quarters. And conveniently, I've even got a built in common denominator. I think the answer is going to be five out of 12. How would I give out marks here? If you did the tree, that would get you one mark if you did it correctly. And then I would give you one mark for the answer. 
Yeah, it's worth two. That's actually, if you guys found that easy, great, because in previous years, my kids have found that really a challenge. But I'm trying to let you know, we got some pretty flexible tools. Specifically, for two events, Amy, we can solve almost anything. If this had been like replace, uh, picking five marbles, going back and forth, that would be much tougher if I didn't do the tree. Did Tally find it? Were you here last class? Nope. Continue. Next page. Okay. Now, multiple choice test. Jen, this is a classic binomial, binome PDF or CDF question because the odds here never change. On each question, it's going to be one out of four, one out of four. So it's not like cards tree. We're going to use our binome thing. So how many questions? 12. That's also how you know this is not a tree because there's no way I want you to do a 12-level tree, Matt. What are the odds that a student gets none of the questions correct? Now, I'm going to do this both the long way and the short way. The long way was from 12 questions, choose none correct. The odds of getting it correct are 1 and 4, none. The odds of getting it wrong are 3 and 4, 12 of those. And you can totally... You can totally do it that way. Or if you're going to use your calculator and it's a written question, Kelvin, you must write this out. Show me the function and show me what went here. Otherwise, I can't give you full marks. Uh, and you would go 12, 1 quarter, 0. And I'm going to use my calculator because I'm a techie nerd. Twelve comma point two five, which is also one quarter, comma zero. The odds of getting them all wrong, you know what, Brett, you'll probably get one right or more. Point zero three one seven. Zero three one seven. Point zero three two. I take that as well. Three questions correct. So twelve questions. Choose three. And remember. Jordan, this is the formula that's on your formula sheet for this particular topic. Uh, it's uh, n choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x, or something like that. That's there. But you got it built in. 12 choose 3, 1 quarter, 3 right, 3 quarters, 9 wrong. Or binome PDF, 12 comma 1 quarter comma 3, second function, enter. Hey, change the 0 to a 3. I think this will be reasonable odds. Yeah, 0. 0.2581. 0. 0.26, sure. About a 26% chance of getting 25%. What does at most three questions mean? David, okay, this means three or less. And this is where the binome CDF shines. This means three or two or one or zero. And you could do each of those and just add up your answers, and that's perfectly valid, although a little silly. Binome CDF of 12, comma, one quarter, comma, three, that will calculate 3 or 2 or 1 or 0 and add them up. Nope, can't do that, Mr. Duke. CDF of 12, comma, 0.25, comma, 3. You know what? You've got a pretty good chance of getting 25% or less on this test. 0.6488. What you really want to know is at least seven, because seven or more means you passed. Six or more technically, but let's say we're shooting for more than bare minimum. So at least seven. The problem is this means seven or more. My calculator cannot do or more. It can only do or less, so I have to use the complement. 
I have to go 1 minus 6 or less. I have to go 1 minus binome CDF 12 comma 0.25 comma 6. 1 minus binome CDF of 12 comma 0.25 comma 6. Brett, what are the odds of getting seven or more? Not great. 0 0.0143. 0 0.0143. 0 and of course, the moral of this evidence study, which most of you do. I think the sports applications to me are the more interesting ones because I'm sure Vegas uses a more complicated version of this but I'm sure they use some version of this. In fact, I was stunned to find out that because BC does uh, sports action or whatever it's called. I saw a documentary on the news, and I was stunned to find out none of them have a math degree, and they don't actually use math to set the odds. They do gut instinct. I'm sure that can be taken advantage of. I'd be a little worried. Pardon me? I, I, I think I told you guys um, about two months ago, a mathematician in Ontario cracked the barcodes on the scratch and wins so that about 80% of the time he could pick a winner. Okay? And he taught it to his 10 year old kid. So his 10 year old kid would go into the store with his daddy and say, That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And more often than not, they were winners. So he wrote a little a blog and he told Ontario Lottery. And Ontario Lottery denied it. So he wrote, as it turns out in North America, there are only two companies that make all of the scratch and win cards in North America. So one of them has a flaw in their algorithm and at one point was denying it, except he was saying, look, I'm winning far more than chance should ever allow. He, he did it as a math exercise, actually. You know what? But, okay, get... Really, all you're doing, though, is you're ripping off the hospital charities and things. Right? Come on. Let's think about it. Uh, if you're bored, Google. Uh, Google scratch ticket pattern or uh, mathematician finds pattern in scratch lottery tickets. You'll find the, the blog in the article. So it came about two months ago. Pardon me? Uh, apparent, I, I think in the factory, they produce all of the winners at the same time, which meant that the barcodes had some kind of numerical pattern, which was because uh, the barcode has to identify an individual ticket. Each barcode is unique. So he figured out the pattern that and identified mostly winning tickets. Google it. Boy, this is going to be an interesting one online for people that are watching this. Yo. Yep. Below. Below. And it only works below. Yeah. Okay, so at least seven. What does that include? Seven or eight or nine. So how can I get, instead of seven or eight or nine or ten or eleven or twelve, which I could do in uh, individually, what's the opposite of at least seven? Six or less. So I'm using the complement. I'm saying if I want to find seven or more, take 100% minus six or less, because whatever's left over should be seven or more. And how do I do six or less? That's the binome CDF. And in fact, I'm going to be honest with you guys, probably on your test, if I ask you a CDF question, it's going to be an or more question so that you'll have to clue in, I've got to go or less to make this work. Does that make sense? I like number eight, I like number eight, I like number eight, I like number eight, number eight, I like number eight. I like number eight. Okay. Number eight, we're doing two things. Picking a jar, picking a marble. Uh, I think two things, Jordan, tree. First thing I'm going to do is pick jar one or jar two. Is it 50-50 chance of picking jar one and jar two? It was in some of the homework questions, but I told you I find that kind of boring. So here, it looks like we're rolling a die. If a one or two comes up, we go to jar one. So what are the odds that we end up picking from jar one? Two out of six. What are the odds that we end up picking from jar two? Four out of six. Then we have 
red, white, black, red, white, black. In jar one, it's how many red? Three out of eight? Two out of eight? Five out of, that's what I said, ten. Can't you read my writing? You'd think by now, at this point in the year, you would actually be able to read my writing. That just tells me you haven't done the notes very often. He says, trying desperately to recover. All the times I've mocked you guys for doing math on your calculator, and I can't add to ten. Really? Uh, here we have 4 out of 12. Am I right? Out of 12? Woo! 4 out of 12. 5 out of 12. 3 out of 12. And I don't think I'm going to get a common denominator here. I'm going to end up using my calculator. Here we go. Nick, what does A want me to find? What does A want me to find? You know what? Here, or here. What does or mean? Multiply down, add across. So I think the probability of red is going to be 2 out of 6 times 3 out of 10, or 4 out of 6 times 4 out of 12. Is there going to be a built-in common denominator this time? No. Then, you know what? Do yourself a favor. Use the technology. 2 out of 6 and 3 out of 10, or 4 out of 6 and 4 out of 12. Enter. Math. Enter. Enter. 29 out of 90. B. Nicole, what's the first word in B? If. Give, you know what? Given, conditional. And here's also how I know. If what? The bottom level, find what? No, nope. find the probability what? Top level. We're going backwards up the tree. This is how I recognize, Matt, that this is a conditional probability question. As a statement, it's going to look like this. Given red, find star one. Right? Now, this formula is on your formula sheet, but it sucks. I've given you what I think is a better way to remember this. Do you remember it? It's going to be the probability of what? Both over given. What do I mean by both? It's going to be the probability of 1 and red divided by the probability of red. Now, 1 and red is... Uh, French. Right? It's going to be 2 out of 6 and 3 out of 10 divided by. Now, the probability of red, Madison, is both of these branches. And I could calculate it, but conveniently, I think I just did it over here, anyways. 29 out of 90 is what I would get if I calculated it. But, eh. In fact, I'm going to get 6 out of 60 over 29 out of 90. Now, if you go to your calculator on this line, you do have to be a bit careful. Amy, you're going to have to put the top fraction in brackets divided by, and then put the bottom fraction in brackets. Otherwise, your calculator won't know this is a four-level fraction. Or you could simply say, how do I divide by a fraction? Flip it and multiply, and then if you write it as a multiplication question, your calculator won't freak out. I'll go to my brackets. So bracket 6 over 60, over 60, Mr. Duick. 6t, close bracket, divided by bracket 29 over 90, close bracket, enter, math, enter, enter, is the final answer 9 out of 29? Yes? Now, each of these, oh, no, for some reason I only made this worth a total of two marks. On a test, this would probably be worth four marks, two marks each. For now, I'll give you a half mark for the tree, 
a half mark for this answer. A half mark if I saw this statement or that statement. And a half mark for the final answer. And if you would be so kind as to give yourself a score out of count them 23. Oh, is the back page? I'm not done. Oh, yeah, there's even more. That seemed a little short. Oh, my favorite, Venn diagrams. Cool. How many dots are there? 19, okay. What's the probability that A and B occurs? 2 out of 19. What's the probability that A and not B occurs? By the way, another way to say this in English is A only. How many dots are in A only but not in B at the same time? Four. Oh, by the way, we're falling back, Jasmine, on our very first rule, which was if you can count it, you can solve it, right? Uh, neither A nor B. I think that's these eight. At least one of A or B. That means one or the other or both. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think eleven out of nineteen. At most one of A or B occurs, but not both. Dylan, what do you think? At most one, but not both, it means don't count the overlap. Nine, yes? Okay, I think F and G are conditional probability questions. So I'm going to set them up as a statement. F, probability, what's the given? Which is going to be A and B divided by the given one. I think we already did A and B. What was A and B? It's listed there. What was A and B? 2 out of 19. Divided by, what's the probability of B? 1, 2, 3. Ah, this is in B too, is it not? 7 out of 19. How do I divide by a fraction? Flip it and multiply. You know what? Two out of seven. Right? Uh, now that I see that, I say, oh, what they're really saying is, if you know you're in B, how many are also in A? Two out of those seven. Gotcha. B occurs given that A has occurred. I think the answer is going to be, two out of six, but let's see if I can prove that with the conditional equation. It's going to be B given A, which is the probability of B and A divided by the probability of A, both over the given one. B and A, oh, that was two out of 19, because and was the overlap, divided by A, uh, 6 out of 19. And lo and behold, I end up with 2 out of 6 or 1 third. Okay? Yeah, yeah? Conditional, given, if, suppose. Last one, I think. Yes? Oh, yes. The defective question, which I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. I think I have two versions of this test. One for its conditional probability question has the marbles one that we did a couple of questions earlier. One has factory defective. This is a nice industry kind of an application. Machine A, Rio, produces 60% of the product. Well, machine B produces 40% of the product. 3% of the pop, uh, production from machine A is defective. 
while 2% is for machine B is defective. Let's do a tree. First, we can be from machine A or machine B. Adam, what are the odds that we're from machine A? 0.6. What are the odds that we're from machine B? 0.4. And then we can be defective or not, defective or not. As a decimal, what are the odds that we're defective if we're from A? Now, I love it because about five of you made the one dumb mistake that will drive me crazy on this test. I heard my friend Dan say it and then correct himself. He said, oh, 0.3. Now, what is that as a percentage? Not That's 30. And everything else is going to be wrong and garbage because you're going to put a 0.7 there, right? So don't make that mistake. What is it properly, Dan? 0 0.03 and 0.97. And down B, it's 0 0.02 and 0.98. And then if they want the probability that it's defective, I think I'm pretty sure that's this branch or this branch. Rhea, what does or mean? Plus. It's going to be 0 0.6 times 0 0.03 or 0.4 times 0 0.02. I think I can almost do this in my head. 0 0.6 times 0 0.03, I think it's 0 0.18. Plus 0 0.4 times 0 0.02, 0 0.08. Is the answer 0.26? No? Yes? 0 0.026? No, 0.26, isn't it? Oh, no, I'm missing a zero. You're right. I'm off here. Extra decimal places, Mr. Duick. Thank you, David. I can't do this in my head, apparently. It would be this. Is that right? Woohoo! Which makes sense, because I was getting a 26% chance that it was defective. But wait a minute. It's 3 and it's 2. How are you getting 26% out of that? B. B. Megan, what's the first word of B? If given conditional. Given what? Given defective. Oh, which is the bottom branch. Yeah, we're going up. What's the probability it came from B? Which is going to be both over the given one. It's going to be B and defective divided by defective. B and and defective, I'm pretty sure is that branch there. I'm pretty sure it's 0.4 times 0 0.02 divided by defective, which I think we just figured out. It would be both of these branches, but since I already did the arithmetic, Madison, I'm just going to put a 0 0.026 there. And since it's decimals, I'm going to my calculator. Point Four times point zero two divided by point two six, and I get I ah curses Red Baron. And I get that or four out of thirteen if you went as a fraction. I'm guessing most of you went with decimals. Point zero three seven seven. No, 0 0.3077. How about learning to read, Mr. Duick, as well? Wow, am I still... How many marks is this worth? Three? I would probably go like this. One mark for the tree, one mark for the answer, and one mark for this answer. Now I think you can give yourself a total score, correct me if I'm wrong, out of 23. Can you not? And if you need to lawyer with me, now is the time.